Today I'm going to take a look at this Riverbed Steelhead 550 series as opposed to the 2050 series that I looked at many, many moons ago. Uh, this one is a much more compact version. It's uh, not rack mountable by default, but you can put on little, uh, you can put on the uh, brackets if you want. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a much smaller unit than the, uh, the previous one, which was a full like rack server. Uh, this one just has a couple USB ports, a console port, four LEDs for hard drive access, network access, that sort of thing. A LAN and a WAN port, and a primary and an auxiliary connector. I think these are also Ethernet as well. And on the back, we have nothing except an IEC power connector. There's no power switch on this unit. It powers on automatically. Now, this particular one uh, had a password on it which uh, I managed to reset by reading like a tech note on how to reset the passwords on these things. And it turns out it's just a really boring console interface with eh, just, yeah, it looks like a Cisco router. It's not really worth taking screenshots or doing a screen capture of, it was quite boring. Either way, this is a very small unit. As you can see, this is a two and a half inch hard drive. So that gives you a bit of scale to how just how tiny this thing is. Power supply. Very large uh, fan shroud on this thing to duct the massive amount of air from these three PWM controlled 40 millimeter fans. The motherboard is a completely custom design from Riverbed themselves. And unfortunately it has no video support whatsoever on it. So using this as a standalone computer is kind of out of the question with the exception of maybe something like PFSense or, another, or um, a Linux distribution because you do have a console port on it. So you could theoretically just use the headless version of PFSense and, and run that, but I don't know. I'm not really convinced this would be the best choice for a PFSense server, especially since newer versions of PFSense require the ASNI instruction set that's part of modern chips. Uh, it's basically the hardware um, encryption engine. And uh, yeah, older chips don't support that. So you'd be limited to a, a specific version of it, which is, um, you know, not the end of the world, but it's not great. Uh, there's two RAM slots on this thing. One's populated with a two gig stick of uh, DDR2-3200 ECC memory. It's uh, also registered. And there is a small Intel USB drive. This is an Intel solid state drive and it's whopping two gigs. It's essentially a USB flash drive. Um, you know, I'm sure they charge a significant amount of money for it, but when it comes down to it, that's all it is. It's just a USB connector and a controller and some memory and yeah, two gigs, not a lot. taking the heat sinks off so we can get a better look at stuff and I popped this one off and I thought I ripped off one of the BGA packages. <laughs> this is uh, one of the ethernet controllers and yeah, they obviously didn't populate the other one and there's a little foam block. You can even see the little dimples of the solder. This ethernet controller is actually for an unpopulated group of two more ethernet ports, which are not installed on this particular model. Also, there's uh, relays for bypassing, but um, they're obviously not installed for this one either. And <laughs> this last one's actually very crooked. So this is the main CPU. As you can see, it's surrounded by quite a bit of power circuitry. Uh, this is a low voltage Xeon chip uh, that's dual core 1.66 gigahertz around 31 watts so it's basically like a xeon atom chip it's really not that interesting i i think it's even 32 bit instead of 64. so i mean it's 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 pretty out of date um compared to uh, what we have now i mean it is technically a xeon but barely and if we move along there's the platform controller and it's uh, covered in this thermal goop that you can't get off, or 
well, it's really hard to get off. I hate this stuff. Can, you have to scrape it. Alcohol doesn't do anything to it. Uh, we got some solid caps, which is nice. BIOS. Uh, this is probably the serial controller. And like I said, the Ethernet controller. And a nice uh, diagnostic code indicator. And uh, it has a CMOS battery. This is not the CMOS battery. This is a super cap. So uh, when there's a power outage, this can operate the relays and switch them into a bypass mode if you want, where uh, it will just bypass the entire device and go right into your uh, router, rest of your network, whatever your arc, um, your layout is. But basically, it can it can operate the relays even with a power outage. That's what those are for. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And so there's the USB connector for the uh, hard drive, or sorry, the um, USB drive. There's an unpopulated component here, or connector here, which is probably just for testing. And a small chip there, that might be the uh, PWM controller for the CPU, or the, um, the power supplies for the, the voltage regulator for it. A couple more ethernet controllers over here. And that is about it. Um, there is a spot here for another PCI E connector. So I'm not sure if this could actually have a 1x PCI uh, slot installed, in which case you would be able to run a video card in theory. Uh, you can get adapters to modify a 1x uh, card down to 1x, and they do make the odd card that works on a 1x PCI, PCI Express slot. There isn't really much on the back of the board. There's a couple active components for the Ethernet and stuff like that, but other than that, it's mostly bypassing and the like. Uh, they didn't clean the flux residue on all these um, either hand or uh, wave soldered parts, probably hand soldered because there's SMD stuff on it. But uh, other than that, it's kind of an interesting board layout. It's got these two little notches of different sizes on either side. And this is where the power comes in. It's just this uh, four-way Molex connector. This is one of the three fans. These are all 12 volt uh, ball bearing fans by AVC and they are ridiculously loud. These things are so loud. That's why I didn't power right on earlier. Um, they do um, PWM down to a, a slower speed so they're not too bad, but oh man, when it first turns on, this thing sounds like a huge, huge rack server despite only having three fans. The 100 watt power supply is reasonably compact. It only outputs 12 volt. That's why there's so much voltage regulation circuitry on the board. Uh, they're obviously producing the uh, core voltage for the CPU and all the other ICs and all the lower voltages used by various components on the board. Uh, this thing is kind of odd in that they, they spent money and got a nice Nippon Chemicon uh, main filter cap, but all the other ones are Tapo, which I have seen before, and I've also seen them dead, so I'm not convinced that this thing would be all that reliable. I'm sure these aren't the worst caps in the world, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna spend money on this one, why wouldn't you just <laughs> why wouldn't you just put money into the rest of them? I mean, it's, this isn't a super cheap piece of hardware, so eh, I mean. As a standalone power supply, it's not too bad. All you need is a, a mains input and you're good to go. 12 volts at, uh, I think it's 6.3 amps. Yep. 8.3. The back fits reasonably well constructed. Nice arrangement of all the uh, capacitors and resistors and some uh, couple active components, you know, big diode or two. Uh, decent creepage distance with holes cut out, probably more for ventilation than anything else, just to get some airflow around uh, this big uh, transformer. One nice attention to detail is the uh, light pipes for the uh, LEDs on the front. <laughs> There's actually a fifth one that they've broken off just because uh, this particular model doesn't use it. But as you can see, they actually do a proper PCB layout for it. And if we flip it over, you can see that it's like a very nice kind of P-shaped light pipe design where it allows 
the uh, upward firing surface mount LEDs to point out the front. Not the most reusable piece of uh, networking equipment I've ever seen, but uh, it's not a bad design overall. I mean, I do like the compact case with uh, the nice cooling and space for a couple drives, plus an internal USB port for um, uh, running an operating system like PFSense. But the custom board and everything and eh, kind of underpowered Xeon, I think you'd probably be better off just buying a mini ITX board with a more modern Atom chip, especially since they tend to charge a lot for these on eBay. I mean, I got this one really cheap on eBay, but uh, like so many other networking things, they people tend to put them up for hundreds of dollars when they're not worth it.